Well, it's come a long way. Um, people are, you know, making an honest living, making web video now, which is great. Um, we've got some guys making as much as half a million a year, but obviously that's the exception and not the rule. But there's a nice middle class of folks making uh, enough to get by. Um, and, you know, we're doing about 100 million views a month now, a little bit more now. Um, and we're starting to make inroads into the, into the living room. And so we're on Google TV, Roku, a bunch of other devices. So we're really excited about that as well. Can you say who's watching on connected TVs? It's definitely more of an investment at this point. So it's still really, really early uh, for the living room. Um, I would say it's probably between 5 and 10% of our viewership. Um, but it's a growing, growing population, and we think that's where everything will end up. Why is that? Well, I think it's just a natural progression. Our shows have been getting longer and longer, and people are spending more and more time watching them. And I think it becomes a natural progression that you want to do that on your couch rather than sitting in front of your computer. You guys provide a service. Um, how does it work with Flip, and how do producers get on these connected TVs? So it's really easy. A show, a show producer can just come to us, uh, upload their show, um, and then apply to be on any one of these platforms. Um, and pretty much so long as you have a show, uh, you'll get approved. Um, the, the, the biggest thing is that we want to make sure that people aren't trying to use us to get spam or whatever other kind of content onto these platforms. And the monetization, where does that stand now? I know it's, uh, there's not really ad serving right now. What's the status right now and where do things need to go? I think it's still really early on the monetization front for the living room. Um, it's going to be a little while before we really see some traction there. I think one of the biggest hurdles we have is that uh, you know, ads are still very largely flash based. And you know, the creative that we get, the materials that we get, it's all still based in flash. Um, and so until that sort of moves along, and the, the, the devices catch up uh, and the ad creative catches up, I, I think we're going to see blank spots there for a while. What is the format that gets onto Roku through Blip or what is that? Everything is driven off H.264. So anything from your you know, iTunes, iPod, Apple TV device to Roku to Google TV to our player, it's all H.264. You guys started out doing a lot of download podcasts, video podcasts mm -hmm. in a big way. Where does that stand? Where did, is downloadable media sort of uh, gone to the wayside or might it come back or what's happening along those lines? We still very much support it and there's still a, a pretty strong following for that sort of thing on Blip. Um, I would say between 10 to 20 percent of our viewership is still coming out of podcasts and iTunes. Um, and you know that makes a lot of sense because those people are you know watching on trains or listening on in their cars those sorts of things places where they don't necessarily have an internet connection how has the industry how has blip you know dealt with html5 and the apple devices and android and and so forth and it's all happened pretty quickly i think yeah I, you know we're actually blip very excited about html5 and we really want to go to html5 as our standard player so we want that same player to be uh, you know, on our iPad and all our, all our devices, as well as on our destination site and in all of our embeds. Um, and and I, I think you know, supporting open standards and open frameworks just ends up being a win-win for everybody. Um, it, it's a bit of a challenge yet because so much of, of the components that we've relied on are Flash-based. But slowly but surely, we're, we're getting there. Um, what we're doing now is trying to leverage Flash as a sort of bridge wherever we don't have access to native components. So for example, if we have Flash ads and we're using HTML5 player, there's no reason to say we can't put a Flash overlay or a Flash pre-roll uh, before the HTML5 video. One of the immediate things that people notice when they're starting to use their HTML5 player is that it's just a lot faster. It feels a lot faster, and that's because it's using much more native components. It's not using a plug-in architecture. It's using the native video playing uh, widget that's available in the operating system. Um, so that, that just feels a lot better. Uh, another big component of it is that the same developers that we use to develop the website, develop any of the, of the other tools that are, are HTML based can go and work on the player. It's not a separate technology, it's not a separate team. We use the same tools. Um, so it's, it's a big win for us as well. Where do you see video consumption going next year and how are you guys uh, sort of strategizing around that? Sure. I think mobile is going to be a big part of 2011, uh, as big as the living room. Um, our, our approach to, bo to, to, especially mobile, our approach there is anywhere where standard you know, HTML components are available, places where there are WebKit, browsers, that sort of thing, we go and build a, a, an experience for that. 
Um, we'll probably be getting into more native apps on the iPhone and Android next year, but uh, anywhere that there's WebKit will probably support Blip. What are some of the challenges to, uh, to mobile? I think bandwidth is definitely the biggest, uh, one of the biggest barriers right now. Um, just, you know, people struggle to get their email to work in major cities, so it's, it's a difficult problem to solve. Um, and I think we have to kind of rely on the mobile platforms, on the, on the mobile carriers to catch up. Um, but besides that, you know, the development environments are also a bit of a challenge. If you want to develop a native application, which seems to be where a lot of consumption is happening, um, you have to have specialized teams, specialized code. Um, that makes things a little bit more difficult. And lastly, uh, tell us a little bit about how the uh, editorial or the content creating universe has changed uh, at Blip and kind of where things might be going. Sure. So, you know, we find that the most successful shows on Blip are actually the ones that build communities of their own. Um, they go out and they, you know, spend as much time working and, and communicating with their viewers as they do actually making the show. And it's not necessarily the high production quality or high production values and, you know, the sort of scripted stuff that you're used to seeing on television that's working. It's the stuff that you can't find on television that's working. It's, it's, stuff, it's stuff like uh, videos about StarCraft or videos where a guy makes fun of shows from the 80s, that sort of thing. It's, it's, different, it's a different sort of content that's working.